What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics and Pop Culture and today we are asking the question, what are blue chip keys? That's right, the term blue chip keys gets thrown around in this hobby uh, probably every day. So today we're going to talk about it. If you aren't subscribed to the channel yet though, please take the time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below as well, including how you can become a patron member of the channel for only $3.99 a month and the option of becoming a YouTube channel member for only $1.99 a month. Awesome perks involved in both memberships, plus you get to help support the channel. All right, so let's first start out with a base definition of what a blue chip comic is. Now, before I read this definition, I do want to state the term blue chip. This has been around uh, as a term outside of comic books, right? It, it, it's for basically any industry. You could talk about blue chip businesses. Uh, when investing, you could talk about blue chip stocks and so forth. But let's read what it means as a blue chip comic book. Quote, a comic that, as an investment, has proven itself to be low risk, high reward, and can sustain market fluctuation periodically while gaining constant long-term value. All right. I'm going to repeat that just one more time, just so we, we, we have it down. A blue chip comic is a comic that, as an investment, has proven itself to be low risk, high reward, and can sustain market fluctuation periodically while gaining constant long-term value. All right, so obviously there's a lot of finance lingo right in here. Uh, so you might still be a little confused. Okay, I get that. Big fancy words. But what does that all mean? So let's try to break it down uh, piece by piece. Now, obviously, if you're just into comic books because you want to buy some books and you want to read them and you don't care about the condition or the value, then you might not be concerned with the term blue chip. But a lot of us are. So let's first look at what it means on the stock market to be blue chip. So what is a blue chip stock? And we could see some variables here. Some of them relate to, the, to a blue chip comic. Some of them don't. So you got consistent returns. All right. What does a consistent return mean? What is a return? Basically, a return is a profit on your investment. So to be a blue chip stock, you have to have consistent returns. How does that relate to a blue chip comic book? Well, like it says in the definition, high reward. That means basically consistent return. And where it says right down at the bottom while gaining constant long-term value. Constant long-term value is consistent return because year after year, as time passes, you're going to be seeing higher profits, a higher return on your initial investment, right? Look what it says next here for blue chip stock, low risk. Well, what does it say for blue chip comic? Has proven itself to be low risk. What does that mean? Low risk means that it's, you know, looking at stocks, you have conservative stocks, right? Then you have moderate stocks, then you have high risk stocks. A low risk investment means there's a smaller amount of risk of you losing money out of your initial investment, all right? So basically, blue chip means if it's proven that if you put money into this investment, most likely you aren't going to lose money. There's very low risk that you're going to lose money. All right, the next thing for blue chip stock is high dividend payout. That doesn't really uh, pertain to comic books, so we're just going to skip over that. Uh, next is decent returns during bearish markets. Now, this does pertain to comic books, and I'm going to speak to what a bearish market means. For those that don't understand market lingo and finance lingo, there's really two types of main markets. It's a bearish and a bullish market. Okay, we're going to bring up, uh, I, I love this, this, this animation here, all right? Uh, this animation is funny. So you got a, a bull market. So it's breaking a bull market down is an, um, a market that, that's leaving the investors very optimistic, right? Because usually prices go up. Uh, they use a, a kind of a, a analogy here of a bull, you know, uh, uh, puts his head and, and puts his horns, uh, you know, up to like to buck whatever he's, you know, uh, fighting. So the head and the horns are going upward where 
a bear stomps down, you know. So in a bear market, it's more of a pessimistic market. Prices are going down and it's, it's not a good look, right? So again, when we go back to uh, decent returns during a bear market, a bearish market, meaning that a blue chip investment, so a blue chip comic, even when market trends might be going down, you're still not really losing out on your investment. You still, I, I, regardless of if it's climbing or maybe it's just stagnating, you still have a solid return on investment, say if you were wanting to sell during a bearish market. So let's, let's look at this image. This is awesome because, you know, we have so much talk right now about, oh, the market's going to crash and you know, uh, everything that's going on in the market right now, it's not sustainable. It's, it's market manipulation. It's this and that. I talk about it all the time. And then you get people using these, these terms that I don't think they really understand. And this is a lovely example of what a healthy market does. What do you notice here? I love the graphics. A bull market is in the green. It's where you see a steady flow of, of increases, right? The bear market is in the red where you see dips, all right? And you can see a trend here, green, red, green, red, green, red. What are some of those trends within the green and red? Well, the green periods within the market are usually longer than the red, and also the green periods see a higher increase than the red periods see a decrease. So what does that mean? Thresholds, I talk about this all the time. Even when the red period ends, look at each red period. The red period dips and it ends at a, at a value that is still higher than the lowest part of the previous green. So what does that mean? That's a healthy market. That's healthy ebb and flow. So that's why if you look at the market right now with the way comics are booming and key comics are booming, a lot of them are, um, even if there's a cool off period, and it dips down, there's going to be thresholds. And that's, a, that's what we call a bearish market. And what happens during bearish markets? Uh, people may, may panic or sell off, but then prices drop some, and more people say, oh, look, now I can afford that, that book that was going for $2,000. I can afford it for $500 less. I might buy it now. Boom. And what does that then do? It starts to generate the next phase of the market, which is another bull period. All right. So ebb and flow, healthy market. Now let, let's ask this question. Can modern comics be blue chip comics? <sighs> All right. I'm going to tell you one thing. There's no, there's no industry definition of this. There's no black and white. Yes or no. All right. But, uh, and like it says here, there are no defined time limits to what defines a blue chip comic. So essentially, yeah. Modern comics can be blue chip comics. There's a but there, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now, first off, let's define modern comic book. I'm sorry, but on my channel, and when I'm expressing the ages of comic books, a modern comic book isn't a comic book that came out in 1991. A modern comic book isn't a comic book that came out in the 80s. All right? Uh, the Copper Age lasted until 1992. And as far as I'm concerned, even the rest of the 90s at this point aren't modern comics. Um, we, are, we are 21 years removed, 22 years removed from the 90s. So to call any year in the 90s modern, uh, now there's a lot of elements that went into the changing of comic books when we got into the new millennium. So when I talk about modern comics, I really talk about the 2000s over the last 21, 22 years. You might want to throw, you know, later 90s books in there, but I'm absolutely not talking about early 90s or 80s books at all. Those are not modern comics. So ab there's absolute blue chip keys coming out of the late 80s and early 90s, specifically a um, couple that I can say off the top of my head. It makes Spider-Man uh, number 300, uh, Batman Adventures number 12, um, makes Spider-Man number 361. You can even look at... Um, uh, New Mutants, uh, 98. Uh, so, you know, there are definitely books that I personally would consider blue chip keys because they've been around long enough. They've been around long enough. And why? Uh, because time matters. Time absolutely matters. So 
put any comic book to the test, okay? Does it have consistent returns? All right, is it low risk? And does it, can it withstand a, a bearish market? So how do you test those things? Well, time, right? Now, let's look at Ultimate Fallout 4. Ultimate Fallout 4 is a book that you can argue has all these factors. Consistent returns, uh, low risk, and withstands a bearish market. Now, why does it have consistent returns? Because if you go back to when it came out, 2011, this book never really lost value. It may have small ebb and flows here and there. But remember, up until about a little over a year ago, this book in, in a high grade, in, in, in a 9.8, was still valued, you know, under $400. So, you know, and that's, that's CGC. So if you look at, you know, that's about almost 10 years of it being on the market. It had consistent returns. All right. Now, does it is it low risk? Absolutely, because those two things correlate. Consistent returns correlates with low risk. So if you were to invest in an ultimate Fallout 4 between the time it came out in 2011 to uh you, you know, say early 2020, pre-COVID, uh it, it's low risk because you're not really losing money out on that investment. Does it withstand a, a bearish market? So you could say yes there too, because there have been there's been ebb and flow throughout those years as as well. Now keep in mind though, the health of the overall market uh, had been constantly moving upward between 2011 and 2020, uh, peaking at 2019. Uh, not peaking like it would stop, but it, it hit a it, it hit a uh, record highs record highs because obviously it peaked in 2020 as well. So, obviously, Ultimate Fallout 4 has, has all these uh, factors. So, you can consider Ultimate Fallout 4 a blue chip key. But here's, here's where people would argue and why Ultimate Fallout 4 runs more risk than, say, New Mutants 98 or make Spider-Man 300 or, uh, you know, Hulk 181 or Giant Size X-Men number one. Or, obviously, I'm going farther back. Spider-Man number one, Fantastic Four number one. Uh, makes a fantasy 15 or uh, detect comics 27 or or superman number one or action comics number one uh, i'm going farther and farther back the longer a book has been on the market the more time there is to judge these factors on the more validity the book has to be in a blue chip key so ultimately time is a defining factor that quantifies blue chip characteristics again Time is a defining factor that quantifies blue chip characteristics. So you see here we got uh, Edge of Spider-Verse, uh, number two, first appearance of, of Spider-Gwen. And then we got uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 129, first appearance of Punisher. Um, obviously, Amazing Spider-Man number 129 is more quantifiable uh, as a blue chip key just because it's been around for uh, 40 uh, 43 years now, whereas Into the Spider-Verse has been around for just over five years. So uh, although, you know, even Into the Spider-Verse may have quantifiable data of short term, it doesn't really give us a paint a picture of, of long term, especially when you see the margin of growth. Now, even with UF4, the margin of growth for these books, these modern books, have grown almost exponentially over the last year. So that margin of growth can be uh, concerning to investors because they say, well, even though it's it, it's it's grown in value over, say, you know, the, the first four or five years of it being on the market or for Ultimate Fallout 4, the first nine or 10 years on the market, it's still out of growth. That growth in terms of percentage-wise was nothing in terms of the growth that it had over the last year. So that can prove these books to absolutely be more risky, right? But look, any book, even a blue, even what's actually quantifiable as a blue chip key, like a Bronze Age key or a Silver Age key, even those books, and we've seen it, those books have had uh, marginal growths that have blown years past growth out of the water. So there's high risk there too, and that's why everyone is so afraid of this current market. Oh, it's, it's not sustainable, it's going to crash, because even blue chip keys that are solidified blue chip keys have you know, increase so uh, uh, fast 
in terms of their value on the market. Look at a, a CGC 9.8. Uh, Hulk 181 has almost, almost doubled in value over the last 14 months. It went from about a $19,000 fair market value to about a $40,000 uh, value, fair market value. That's absolutely nuts. So I'm not going to get into to that. That's not what this video is about. We're focusing on what uh, defines a blue chip key. So from there, you know, uh, ultimately, like I said, we got to look at time. So let's look at Hulk 181. Um, and this looks like that image that I showed of the, the, the bear and the bull, the bear and the bull, and how we see ebb and flow in a healthy market. You know, so y you look at this uh, graph here, and this is, I know it's only nine years. It's a sample size. It goes back to 2012, right? But you can see over this time period, and this is all the sales for a CGC 8.5 fair market value. All right, this, this is specific individual books moving day to day, week to week. Look at what it does. It goes up. So you could say that this book is operating in a uh, bull market and then it dips for a little while. Bear market up, bull down a little, bear up, down, up, down. And what you see here, just like I said about that image about the bull and the bear market, is your bull periods are longer and more steep than your bear period. So even though there's cool off periods over the long term, there's a gradual increase in value. So again, this book, and it, look, if we went back to the 80s and watched what this book has done on the market, you would see the same thing, constant growth. So there it is, everyone. That is uh, my take on what defines a blue chip key. Uh, I really hope that this helped you all had a better understanding of what a blue chip uh, comic is if you if you didn't know before and you wanted more insight. So uh, re remember, you got to look at all the qualifying factors, all right, and you got to really measure time. You know, I I've always said this too. There's no, there's no uh, definition written in stone on how we can quantify or qualify modern books in general though everyone are going to be more volatile they are going to have higher risks so i would just be hesitant to call an ultimate fallout for a blue chip key at this point personally i'd want to give it maybe five more years but i'm going to stand firm and i'm going to say ultimate fallout Four is that book of the modern generation i've said it before i'll say it again so anyways everyone thank you so much so much for watching uh, I, let me know what you all thought of this video in your comments below. Let me know if you have any other questions. Again, appreciate you all. If you aren't subscribed, please, please take the time to do so. Check the notification bell off too to make sure you're getting notified if YouTube even sends you notifications because I know sometimes they don't. Again, thank you so much to all my members, my YouTube members, my Patreon members. Be well and until next time.